This site here is Red Gum Reserve in Batesford. It's a council reserve that has some wonderful conservation assets on it. Some beautiful big old river red gums, some remnant native grasslands, one of the rarest vegetation types left in Victoria now, and a whole bunch of revegetation work that's been done by the local community to take this from what was a bare paddock on a creek line to revegetated biodiverse area that's full of birds and and small mammals and that, the like. It's a, it's a fabulous place, it really is lovely. And the heavy fuel loads. So people might view this as us putting fuel in here, but it's actually working in our favour because it's suppressing the fine fuel. Yes, All that long, rank, introduced grass that's so so flammable. so flammable in summer and if you only got to look here and what some of the very best engagement I do around fire and fire ecology and fire management is that one-on-one -on -one stuff with with people very resource hungry takes a lot of your time potentially but I personally think the outcomes are really really good um, and they will go and talk to their neighbors or their friends or their family and it puts a hopefully a very positive spin on their interaction both with us as an agency and the issue that they had that they were trying to get a result on. Because it was so late in the season, the intensity was still quite low. And that's really evident here. I mean, you just look at this beautiful yeah. tree here. <coughs> We've burnt right underneath this. Mm. And there's, you know, it's a relatively cool burn because yeah, there's good. very little scorch on yeah, the canopy. Right. Um, Personally, I find that doing a site visit with people um, makes me feel more involved as well with their plans and their objectives and that helps me with my own objectives and plans and it shares their passion for the site and it's very rewarding especially when you see people um, excited about what's coming back and what's what's happening. I love walking through here and I walk through here just about every day just to connect with nature really and to calm myself down each day. This is life, you know, this is a, a kind of my, life in microcosm, just one, this one or two trees here. So that's what it means to me. <laughs> Without question, the ability to build relationships based on trust, it's the cornerstone of a successful program. And I think to do that, one of the first challenges is to understand expectations. Now understand what the limitations are of our organisation and our place their role in this you know melting pot this tapestry um, of fire in the environment fire ecology part of it is about figuring out what are the non-negotiables from that and then what are the negotiables and where do you land so it's almost like taking your ideas and putting them through a community filter of like well, what is going to be easily to, um, accepted and, and digestible and where can you build on that there are legal constraints on what people can do um, we try to be very pragmatic about that. We try to bring people along to an understanding of why those constraints are in place. Um, when they hopefully come to an understanding and we're not just beating them over the head with a big stick about it, then hopefully they will trust what we're telling them. So, you know, that's a long period of time uh, and it involves trust based on honesty and an open communication uh, about what we're trying to do, what our own skills and abilities are, uh, what the benefits, the skills and abilities and knowledge that, that the community have. And again, treating everybody as part, equally as part of the team in order to do that, no matter who they work for, what role they play. You know, some of the activities that we carry out where you're actually putting fire into the landscape near people's property is quite a challenging thing to do. There's a lot, a huge amount of work that goes into making sure that those activities are as safe as possible. We just make sure that people are aware it's going on, that they know ahead of time, so that if they've got concerns or queries or they wish to um, you know, perhaps request that we delay a particular activity, maybe a planned burn that might be impacting a, um, something that's important to them, um, so that we have open lines of communication. What doesn't work well for trust is when things don't go to plan and you don't have that follow-up discussion with the rest of the team or with the rest of the community that you're working with as to why things didn't go to plan. 
Uh, you can't always control those things because of the weather, the fuel moisture, the amount of fuel that's there and you need to make sure that the people know that these things can alter the outcome and if they're going to trust you then you need to be quite honest up front about what's going to happen. It's part of that relationship. Um, if you can bring them along, they, you learn something from them, they learn something from you, you come to some sort of level of agreement or disagreement, but there's a level of understanding around that and trust around that, then I think you've gained that, that ability to keep moving forward. And most of that will come through conversation and talking and understanding and learning and listening. And that builds that relationship and that trust over time.